Congratulations on the purchase of your whole house filter. Your new system works in two stages. The carbon filter will eliminate any contaminants or chemicals, and the sediment filter will remove any particulate. This video will walk you through the installation process. The system will consist of the following parts. The carbon filter tank, which is listed SCF, the sediment filter housing, a tank head for the CF tank, a sediment filter to be placed in a sediment filter housing, a gasket and lube for the pre-filter, a spanner wrench, a hose bib assembly, a mounting bracket for the pre-filter two MNPT fittings. Also a bypass valve is optional and sold separately. Your system is compatible with PVC copper and PEX tubing. The materials featured in this installation are a combination of PVC and corrugated water connectors 48 hours prior to the installation. The media and the tanks will need to be activated. This will be accomplished by filling a tank with water. Since the carbon filter tank is shipped without the head in place, you will first need to attach that before this step can be completed. Begin by unscrewing the cap that's on the top of the tank. It can be discarded as it is no longer required. Locate the tank head that comes shipped. In a smaller box, there is an opening on the bottom of the tank head that will align with the pipe that's found inside of the tank. Align them and then press the tank head in place. Press down on the tank head while simultaneously threading it began by hand tightening the head. Once the head is hand tightened, you will need to fully seat it in place to give you leverage. You can insert the head of a screwdriver into one of the openings to help hold the tank in place. You can place your feet around the boot at the bottom of the tank. With the right amount of leverage, you can now fully tighten the tank head onto the top of the tank. Please note that once a tank head has been screwed onto the tank, under no circumstance should you unscrew it or you will risk damaging your system. This may also cause the carbon media to seep into your plumbing. The optional bypass valve will now be installed. There are extenders with rubber fittings that will be pressed into the openings on the tank head or directly into the tank head if you are not using a bypass. Thread the two connectors onto the head and fully tighten them to secure the bypass valve in position. You will now install the MNPT fittings. Insert the rubberized fitting into the opening on the bypass valve and then tighten it in place. Repeat this on the other side of the bypass. The hose bib adapter will now be required to soak the media inside the tank. Locate the inlet side on the carbon filter tank and then fully tighten the hose bib adapter to that connection. A garden hose that's connected to your spigot will then be connected to the hose bib adapter. Before turning on the water, ensure that the bypass is not activated. The valves on the top of the tank should be positioned as shown here. Turn on the water to the hose about halfway. Once water begins to exit the tank, the water can be turned off. Shut off the water to the hose. The valves on the tank head will now be set to bypass. The hose can now be disconnected. The tank will now be moved off into a safe location. In order to properly activate the charcoal, it will need to soak for 48 hours prior to installation. After 48 hours have elapsed, the media inside the tank will need to be flushed. Begin by connecting your water hosts to the inlet side of the tank. Go ahead and turn off the bypass to the tank. You will also notice water escaping from the other valve. Turn on the water to the hose and allow it to run for a few minutes until it begins to run clear. After a few minutes, go ahead and shut off the water. This, the host and the host bib adapter, Reconnect the hose BV adapter to the outflow side of the tank and then connect the garden hose. Turn on the water to the hose and allow it to run for a few minutes. The hose and the hose BV adapter can now be removed with your tank prepped. The neoprene cover that is sold and shipped separately can now be placed. Go ahead and wrap it around the tank. Secure the Velcro strap and then catch the zipper that's at the bottom of the sleeve. As you close the zipper, you can slide the sleeve down onto the tank and properly orient it. The zipper will go all the way up to the collar of the tank. With the carbon filter tank prepped, you will now proceed to prepping the sediment filter. Unscrew the top of the tank to remove it. Inside you will find the gasket and the lube that's required for the next step. There is a groove indented along the top of the housing that will receive the gasket. 
go ahead and lay the gasket in place. Apply some of the provided lubricant along the edge of the gasket and then spread it out to ensure that it's evenly coated. The gasket will then be flipped over and reseated into the groove. Apply the remainder of the lubricant and once again spread it out to ensure that it's evenly coated. The provided sediment filter will now be installed. It has an opening that will rest upon the nipple that's on the inside of the housing. Drop the sediment filter into the housing and then make sure that it sits flush. It should sit just below the surface. The lid of the housing has guides that will ensure that the sediment filter properly aligns when you put it back on. Go ahead and place the lid and fully tighten it by hand. PVC nipples will now be installed on the end and the outlet on the top of the housing. To ensure that there are no leaks, plumber's tape will need to be applied to the threads on the PVC nipples before you install them. Thread the PVC nipple in place and fully tighten by hand as tight as possible. Repeat these steps on the opposite side. A pipe wrench or a pair of pliers will now be required to fully tighten the PVC nipples into the housing. The final step into prepping the sediment filter is to apply plumber's tape to the threads on the PVC nipples. The sediment filter will now be mounted using the provided bracket. Due to the weight, you will need to mount the bracket to a stud and note that a level is beneficial during this step. Once you identify the optimal location, go ahead and mark out the holes to be pre-drilled. A 3 16th drill bit can then be used to pre-drill the holes for the mounting bracket. Locate the bag of the provided bolts and washers, and then use a half-inch socket to secure the bracket to the wall. Before mounting the pre-filter to the bracket, take a look at the top to identify the inlet and outlet direction of the water to ensure that it's being properly oriented. It will then be secured to the bracket with four of the provided bolts. The next steps of this installation will have you tap into the pre-plan. Please be sure to shut off the water to the home before performing these steps. Also note that it's a recommendation to install a bypass ahead of the system to allow for easy maintenance. Bypass valves are sold separately on our website. Expose a pre-plumb and then install a connector with a one-inch threaded adapter. You will need a threaded adapter on the other side of the pre-plumb as well. Plumber's tape will now be applied to the threads of the incoming water supply from the pre-plump. A PVC shutoff valve is now being installed onto the threaded adapter. On the incoming side of the pre-plumb to avoid any leaks, ensure that the shutoff valve is fully tightened. Prep another PVC nipple with plumber's tape. It will then be installed onto the other side of the shutoff valve. Please ensure that the PVC nipple is fully tightened. A corrugated water connector will now be connected to the other side of the PVC nipple. And once again, please ensure that it's fully tightened. The carbon filter tank will now be introduced. Prep the tank by applying plumber's tape to both of the connections. The tank will now be positioned with the connections facing back. The corrugated water connector from the inflowing side from the pre-plan will now be connected to the incoming side on the carbon filter tank. Tighten the connection by hand and then fully tighten to ensure there are no leaks. A corrugated water connector will now be connected to the outflow side of the carbon filter tank. Be sure to fully tighten the connection. That corrugated water connector will now be routed to the inflowing side of the sediment filter. Go ahead and thread the connection and then verify that it's fully tightened. A corrugated water connector will now be added to the outflow side from the sediment filter. Go ahead and thread the connection and then verify that it's fully tightened. Use plumber's tape to prep the threaded adapter on the other end of the pre-plan route. The corrugated water connector from the outgoing side from the sediment filter and connect it to the other end of the pre-plump, thread it by hand, and then verify that it's fully tightened. The system is now connected and will now need to be tested before turning on the water. Used to provide its spanner wrench, place it around the sediment filter housing and then turn it to ensure that it's fully tightened. The sediment filter mounting bracket has an opening that will hold your spanner wrench. Another item before turning on the water is to verify that the shutoff valve is in the off position. 
The bypass valves in the carbon filter tank will also need to be set in the bypass position. One final item before restoring the water is to open the cold water on a bathtub or shower all the way. The water to the home can now be turned back on with water restored. Inspect the shutoff valve for any leaks. If none are detected, go ahead and open the shutoff valve, allowing water to flow through the system. The water to the tub that you opened will also begin to flow. The flow is bypassing the carbon filter tank, but it is flowing through the sediment filter. Inspect it for any leaks, and if any are detected, use the spanner wrench to fully tighten the sediment filter housing in place. If no leaks are detected, you can go ahead and turn off the bypass on the carbon filter tank. Water will now begin flowing through the tank, and you should let it run for 10 minutes. During this time, inspect the collar for any type of seepage. If any water is detected, there could be an issue with the O-ring. A solution for this will be discussed at the end of this video. If no leaks were detected, the installation is now complete. If you see water seeping from around the tank head on the carbon filter tank, it's an indication that the tank head is not tight enough or that the O-ring on the inside has become bunched. To solve the issue, you will need to loosen the tank head just enough to get a small cap between the tank head and the top of the tank. Do not loosen the head any further than this you will run risk of damaging your system. That type of damage could also cause resin to exit the tank and into your plumbing. Once you have a small gap on the tank head, you can go ahead and re-tighten it into position. The tank can now be reconnected to the system and you will then repeat the steps to verify that there are no leaks in the system. Thanks for watching and congratulations on your new system.